Hey, hey fam, welcome to Sino Archaeology, the number one spot all about electroforming of strange and nerdy jewelry that looks like it was found on planets far and beyond our solar system. In this video, I'm going to tell you six tricks how I get my copper and silver electroforming pieces all nice and shiny. Trick one to pull a shiny piece out of the electroforming tank, buy a good solution. Unless you have a degree in chemistry, buy pre-made solution. I know that great guys like Jason Welch and other electroforming gurus and gurettes mix their own electroforming solutions at home, but I don't. First, because I'm a pussy and want to avoid playing around with potentially dangerous chemicals as much as possible. And second, because the self-made solutions are one of the biggest sources of error when electroforming. The solution is the heart of the electroforming process. Every solution mix has its own requirements and it's a very painful way of checker until the mix with the chemical components you find in your store will work flawlessly. And after all, we don't want a PhD in chemistry, we just want to electroform some jewelry, right? That's why I prefer to buy my solutions. The producers of these solutions are plating professionals who know all the math and chemistry behind their own products, and they can tell you exactly what amps, volts, and time is needed for a certain layer thickness. Some even have an online calculator that spits out exact values. So, no guessing here, your pieces turn out perfectly every single time. And one free additional tip, even if it looks like Gatorade, never ever drink the solution. Trick 2 to get a bling bling shininess. Get your amps, volts and time right. As mentioned before, you have to dial in the right values on your rectifier for your specific solution. This also heavily depends on the surface area of the object being plated. The more surface area, the more amps. Higher amps also determines how fast metal will be deposited. But be careful, my friend. This also increases nodulation. Nodulation? Those tiny spheres and organic structures that build up on exposed areas of your piece. If you want an even smooth plating, go low and slow. I usually leave my pieces in the copper bath for about six hours. Time is your friend here. The longer you leave the object in the bath, the thicker the metal layers and the heavier your pieces will get. Finally, volts is entirely defined by the type of solution, so read the manual of the solution and dial in the right value. For copper, it's usually between 0.8 and 3 volts, and for silver, it's around 1 volt. Don't go over 1.2 volts or the silver will oxidize and turn black. Trick 3 on the quest for dope-ass shininess of your electroforming pieces. Stick your anodes into anode bags. Anodes are the victims in the electroforming process. They donate metal ions to the solution and will be eaten up slowly. This process releases waste products like sludge, dirt and debris into the solution. If this waste builds up, it will contaminate the solution and eventually end up as nodulation on your object. While nodulation can look cool too, it is the enemy of shiny. And if you stick your anodes into anode bags, all waste will be collected there and won't seep into the solution anymore. I use cheap PE filter bags, cut them to the right size for my anodes and sew or hot glue them together. No big deal at all. Trick 4 to get that surface of your pieces bright and shiny. Get your object moving. In professional plating, cathodes aka the sticks with the mounted objects are always in motion. They are usually rotated at a slow rate of 6 to 35 rpm. It helps to avoid areas where current builds up and causes nodulation. It also helps to stir the solution and keep contaminants from sitting onto your object. But most important, it helps to avoid anode shadows. Imagine your anode being a light source. All the surfaces of your object that would be directly lit by that light source would plate nicely. 
all the areas that would be in the shadow, essentially all areas pointing away from the light source, for example, the inner part of a ring or a cuff, would get a thinner coat. That, my friend, is not a good thing. So when your object rotates all the time, all the areas will be exposed evenly and almost no anode shadows will appear. A rotating object also allows you to place only one single anode into your tank and you don't have to noodle around with copper coils. You can move your object manually, just give it a little twist every 10 minutes or if you, as lazy as I am, automate the process. To move my objects, I've constructed the rotor jig, a simple system to hold, swap and rotate my pieces. It's pretty easy and cheap to build. And if you want to build it yourself, I've put everything you need to know down below in the description. Trick five, regularly filter your solution. You can't avoid contamination of your solution. You can only reduce it. Anode bags being a big one, but you should also regularly filter your solution, either by hand using a coffee paper filter or as I do because, again, I'm a lazy dog with an electric fish tank filter pump. Honestly, since I placed the E-High mini flat into my electroforming tank, my objects are so shiny, I sometimes have to turn it off to get at least some little nodulation and structure happening. No worries, the pump is entirely made of plastic and won't be eaten away by the acidic solution. I've had my pump in my tank for months and it still works nicely. Trick six to bling up your electroformed pieces, use a rotary tool and a steel brush. If for some reason, like not following my tricks one to five above maybe, you get a dull surface on your piece, you can always polish it with a rotary tool like a Dremel and a steel brush. I recommend buying the original Dremel brushes 442 and 443. I have used Chinese knockoffs before, but these brushes unfortunately fall apart after a few minutes of use and those tiny little steel needles dart around your room like missiles. I can tell you, I even found them in strange places. So buying the original in this case does save a lot of headache. And don't panic, the steel brush won't harm your copper or silver surfaces at all. Steel brushes have been the number one polishing tool for copper and silver for decades. But remember, shininess is not an optical property, it is a physical property, aka your surface has to be smooth and even in order for it to be shiny. If you have a lot of microstructure on it, like the beloved nodulation, you'll never be able to dremel it down to a shiny finish. So recap, buy a good solution. Dial in the right amps, volts and time. Wrap your anodes into some cozy anode bags. Keep your pieces moving, filter your solution and if necessary, polish the pieces with a rotary tool and a steel brush and you'll get some maximum bling bling dopeness happening on your pieces. Happy e-forming folks, greetings from Switzerland. See you next time. Ciao zusammen.